In recent years, the U.S. space industry has been thriving. While SpaceX and Blue Origin have been operating for over two decades, emerging space companies have only been around for about half that time. Despite their youth, the explosive growth of these newcomers is not to be underestimated. Most notable among them is Firefly Aerospace, a young company that has rapidly achieved significant milestones. They've even surpassed Blue Origin by reaching orbit and joining the prestigious club of orbital launch providers before this long-established industry giant. So, what exactly did Firefly Aerospace do to make even a heavyweight like Blue Origin look bad? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Firefly Aerospace is currently one of the leading startups in the private space industry, making significant strides, particularly in commercial flight services for orbital delivery. The company's flagship rocket, named Alpha, is a small launch vehicle designed to carry over 1,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit, LEO. It became the first orbital rocket powered by an oxygen-rich stage combustion engine cycle, improving reliability and reducing costs with its carbon composite structures. Since its inception, the rocket has launched six times. The most recent Alpha launch was scheduled for April 28th, but was delayed due to some issues with ground equipment. A new launch was scheduled for the very next day, however. The mission encountered an issue that led to the loss of the lightning engine nozzle extension, substantially reducing the engine's thrust, and the company failed to complete the mission. The launch has since been suspended by the FAA, but even so, this serves as a valuable lesson for a rocket company still new to the industry. To be honest, making mistakes early on is part of the path to future success, just like SpaceX, which had to endure three failed Falcon rocket launches before finally succeeding. Therefore, when compared to everything Firefly has already achieved, this latest failure is relatively insignificant. While Firefly's achievements may not attract major headlines, the progress the company has made is impressive, especially considering its humble beginnings just six years ago. Initially, one of many struggling startups aiming to reach orbit, Firefly faced serious challenges, most notably a rocket fire during its maiden launch in 2021. However, their commitment to technological improvement and rigorous testing eventually paid off. Their breakthrough moment came on October 1, 2022, with the successful launch of their Alpha rocket on a test mission called Victus Knox for the U.S. Space Force. This milestone underscored their resilience and dedication to progress despite earlier setbacks. That symbolic test flight was a significant milestone, not just for Firefly Aerospace, but especially for its Alpha rocket. Within a year of a major failure, the company achieved a critical success, sending its rocket into orbit. This accomplishment placed Firefly Aerospace in an exclusive group. It became the fifth American launch company to reach orbit. At the time, Firefly joined a prestigious club alongside SpaceX, Rocket Lab, Virgin Orbit, and Astra, while Blue Origin had yet to achieve that milestone. Reaching orbit is no easy feat. Elon Musk himself has emphasized the difficulty. Comparing getting to space is relatively easy, while reaching orbit is a hundred times harder. Firefly Aerospace's achievement stands as a testament to their resilience and technical capability. Firefly Aerospace's achievements mark a promising start, an impressive feat that many other programs typically take much longer to reach, instead of managing it within just two launches. When we consider the titans of the space industry, one established giant comes to mind, with roots tracing back to the early 21st century. That giant is Blue Origin. By the time Firefly reached orbit in 2022, Blue Origin had yet to accomplish the same. At that point, its achievements revolved primarily around a handful of expensive suborbital flights. This contrast becomes glaring when juxtaposed with the accomplishments of a fledgling startup, making the veteran player appear somewhat embarrassed by the comparison. The disparity between a company founded in 2014 that successfully launched an orbital rocket and a counterpart established in 2000 paints a perplexing picture. Yet the reality is rather harsh for Blue Origin. Their flagship suborbital vehicle, New Shepard designed for space tourism, had only flown 31 times in its 19-year lifetime. Meanwhile, the much-anticipated first flight of New Glenn, a heavy-lift rocket intended to carry nearly 100,000 pounds to low Earth orbit faced repeated delays, dragging on year after year. Fortunately, New Glenn finally reached orbit in early 2025, 
However, it wasn't exactly groundbreaking, as orbital launches similar to SpaceX's Falcon 9, or those from several startup companies had already become familiar sights. And even with New Glenn's successful first flight, no one knows when its second launch might happen. Blue Origin is currently facing new technical issues, as the public recently discovered that the first stage's tank appeared visibly deformed, suspected to have been caused by a stress-induced rupture. Certainly, Blue Origin is still progressing, but its pace of development is far too slow compared to the rhythm of the market. This pattern of chronic delays continues to raise concerns about whether Blue Origin can truly compete with the achievements of newer, more agile entrants. So, what fuels these doubts and criticisms surrounding Blue Origin's initiatives? Blue Origin's vast resources and access to top-tier engineering talent, coupled with Jeff Bezos's annual personal allocation of $1 billion toward the company, should position it among the leading space entities. With Bezos's immense wealth and the ability to attract top global talent, Blue Origin possesses the crucial components necessary for transformative success in the space industry. Putting aside Jeff Bezos's motivational talks, it's important to acknowledge that Blue Origin grapples with substantial technical and cultural challenges, a situation no fledgling enterprise desires to navigate. Tom Markusic, former CEO of Firefly, boasts a background in prominent space endeavors across public and private sectors in the U.S., spanning from NASA to SpaceX and even Blue Origin. Surprisingly, despite his extensive tenure at NASA and SpaceX, his stint at Blue Origin lasted merely two months. Naturally, there's a rationale behind this brief tenure. In an interview, Markusik reflected on his experience, stating, I went to Blue Origin and was there very, very briefly for just two months. SpaceX had been just brutal and fast-paced, and I thrived in that environment, but Blue Origin felt much more like a rich man's hobby. Perhaps due to his experience with major space corporations, Markusik has steered his company toward a more constructive developmental path, sidestepping a recurrence of Blue Origin's setbacks. Upon closer examination, Firefly exhibits striking resemblances to SpaceX, a shared spirit of experimentation, a willingness to embrace failure, and an unwavering commitment to continuous innovation. Having spent five years at SpaceX, Markusik regards Elon Musk as an inspirational figure, drawn to Musk's unwavering belief that every endeavor will achieve perfection and result in a fantastic outcome. There's a magnetic quality to Musk's mindset, influencing innovators like the founder of Firefly Aerospace as they venture into uncharted territories in space exploration. Naturally, this has led to Firefly Aerospace not only progressing in the launch vehicle niche, but also earning commendable achievements in the lunar science research market. In March 2025, Firefly Aerospace's Blue Ghost Mission 1 successfully landed at its targeted site in the Mare Crisium region. Touching down on four landing legs, the spacecraft delivered 10 science instruments and technology demonstration payloads as part of NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services, CLPS, initiative. Blue Ghost operated for more than 14 days on the surface during 346 hours of lunar daytime, extending its lifespan by just over five additional hours into the moon's ultra-cold night. On moon landing day, I should have had a heart monitor, my heart was racing, but I had full confidence in the team, recalled Jason Kim, Firefly's chief executive officer during the 40th Space Symposium, held here April 7th to 10th by the Space Foundation at the Broadmoor. The trek to the moon involved seven major engine burns, doing so with the company's in-house engine technology that performed with precision, Kim said. So we're going to use that engine over and over. A key to Blue Ghost's spot-on landing was plotting out the spacecraft's changing mass properties to ascertain the craft's constantly changing center of gravity, said Kim. The team was smart enough to design the vehicle with four propellant tanks side by side. So having that balanced design really helped land on the moon and stick that landing, Kim told the audience. It's just what commercial companies do. They come up with creative solutions and innovation to attack the problem. Firefly also conducted robust testing that included 500 hours of rehearsals using multiple simulations to design the system, he said. Another checklist success was the Blue Ghost's autonomous landing. There were no communication outages that we had to worry about. 
No latencies we had to worry about or false alarms from human error. It was just doing everything autonomously in the last hour. That's what made it successful. But also, that's why it was so challenging, Kim said. As a big believer of autonomy, Kim said the company is doubling down on that capability. All of our spacecraft going forward are going to have some level of autonomy, he said, as that's where the future is going. After landing, Blue Ghost immediately got to work. Kim spotlighted two payloads, the Lister drill to probe the moon's subsurface and the lunar planet vac, that successfully collected, transferred, and sorted lunar regolith from the moon using pressurized nitrogen gas. It proved to be a low-cost, low-mass solution for future robotic sample collection. Lister was developed jointly by Texas Tech University and Honeybee Robotics, a Blue Origin company that also provided the Lunar Planet Vac. The Lister drill, plowing down an unprecedented 3 feet instead of a projected 10 feet, did hit some really hard rock formations, related Kim, and that's the whole discovery. We learned so much that we didn't know. A surprising finding from Blue Ghost was the lunar temperature. Nobody has ever done noon operations on the lunar surface. We found out that it's hotter than expected and modeled. It actually starts sooner and it lasts longer, Kim said, observing that the temperature swings on the moon were really, really crazy. Adding to the temperature revelation was another Blue Ghost surprise finding. We didn't know we were going to land next to a huge crater. The sun does hit us from one side and heats us up, but the sun reflected off one side of that crater and hit us from the back. So we actually got hotter because of that reason, said Kim. So there's so much new discovery that we found, and we can pass that forward to other CLPS missions. All the lunar landing components operated through the thermal swings, Kim said, even though they exceeded their thermal limits. So in the future, we know we need to model the geographic features of the moon a lot better with higher fidelity, Kim added. Blue Ghost's five-hour sojourn into the lunar night also provided some takeaway messages. NASA wanted us to turn on the payloads, so we did. And we actually got some payload data, Kim said. The Lister was the last payload standing. That was pretty spectacular. Information gleaned from the short foray into lunar night, said Kim, shows that there are ways to design lunar lander systems in a modular way to survive and thrive in the night. The Blue Ghost batteries used on the lander exceeded expectations. Taking a modular approach, Kim said more batteries could be added in the future to sustain specific components, enabling them to live on through the cold lunar night. We could add radiators as well, he said. Looking ahead, Firefly is ramping up for annual missions to the moon. The team has begun qualifying and assembling flight hardware for Blue Ghost Mission 2, which will utilize Firefly's Blue Ghost lander stacked on the group's Elytra Dark Orbital Vehicle for operations in lunar orbit and on the far side of the moon.